In the 1960s, a question came up from the University of Bologna in Italy. Question was, how does nature clean water? How does nature clean soil? How does it mineralize? What makes humus? What is it such wonderful and explained functions? Up to the 1960s, how does it do it? So the university put a bunch of young scientists at the time, <coughs> a group of about 12, to discover what in reality fulfilled those functions in nature. It took 35 years of work to find out that in effect, nature has got a wonderful, wonderful trick. Has got a group of 42 bacteria, which exist everywhere in the world, in soil and water. They exist this in the same groupage, in the same format, from Alaska to Australia and anywhere else in the world. That group of bacteria does multifunction. It's the cleaning agent, it's the remediator of nature. The bacteria on, on their own, they don't do much, but in specific conditions, once they detect anything that's organic and inert, then these bacteria get together and they form a phenomenal group, which we call ergophyto. It took 35 years to find out how to extract it from nature, how to put it in a bottle, and put it dormant. It was not invented by us, it was not discovered by us. It was identified and bottled. And that's what the origins of Ergofito are. Now, with this uh, Ergofito, we started to look at the side of agricultural. What does it do in the soil? And what it does, the group of uh, bacteria called Ergofito produce Humus. Humus is the heart of soil. Without humus, you cannot grow anything. You cannot have plants to grow. You need the humus in the soil for the soil to be alive. You have, if you have less than 1% humus in soil, the soil is considered sterile. Therefore, you have to have humus. So, <clears throat> to us, there is no soil such as wasted soil or inert soil because we can restore to nature, to back to nature, any soil we can find. We don't care as long as it's got a pollution made out of organic source. So humus in the soil, as we all know, mineralizes the food for the plants. But more than that, it makes a lot of the nutrients available. So you can start managing your ground, your soil. Countless times you read on newspapers, you see articles how nitrates, phosphates have, have leached into lakes and rivers, polluted the rivers, killed all the fish. Wait a minute, why would the farmer pay for fertilization to be washed down the, into, the, into the rivers and kill fish? This is not what the farmer wants. The farmer wants to use his fertilizer to grow his plants. So what's missing? Humus. Why? Why is it not humus in every soil? Because with the continuous effect of chemical fertilization, we have managed to destroy and kill a lot of the natural uh, um, format of humus. And that's why ergophyto is so vital in every form of agricultural, irrespective of crop, irrespective of soil. Agricultural, is a plant does wants to live, wants to reproduce, just like us. As a matter of fact, we're not that different from a plant. We, we got probably 26% the same genetics than plants. What we like, they like. They like water, we like water. They like uh, certain nutrients, we like certain nutrients. But what's important to know is that the plant cannot move, so its root system is absolutely vital. The rhizosphere of a plant is important and that is where ergophyto plays a vital role. A plant is a living matter. Like all living matter, it goes to the toilet. By its roots, it's called exudates. Exudates must be treated. Like we treat a sewage, the plant needs bacteria and microorganisms to, to treat such uh, exudates. This is the role of ergophyto. The more the plant, the healthier, the more it produces, the more the exudates. Very much like the more we eat, the more we go to the toilet. The formula remains the same. 
the laws of nature remain the same. It doesn't matter if it's a plant or a living or a human. Therefore, we want to bring the humus back to the soil. We're not the only one who claim that. If you read any, any type of uh, documentation scientific, everybody talks about the humus maker. Ergo Fito is the humus maker. Now I'm going to explain what does it do in water. Well, here comes the, the, again the trick of nature. Nature needs clean water because it must allow sunlight to go through its thickness, to feed through its depth, to feed the plants that exist in water. All the algae and all the, the other plants that are there. Photosynthesis is very important to plants submerged and to many other organisms. Therefore, nature wants to, clean, wants to clean the water. But how? By removing organic matter. That's how you clean water. Again, the organic matter is removed by the same group of bacteria called ergophyto. So we use ergophyto not only in agricultural, but we use ergophyto in sewage, in cleaning bays, uh, estuaries, uh, deltas, and so on. And the, often the cause of pollution is sewage or hydrocarbon, effluents, or all of them combined. Regrettably, that's what you're going to find in most places in the world. So what ergophyto will do, it will immediately attack and decompose all organic matter found in water. And the question is, organic matter decomposing in water requires oxygen. That is why when a body of water with too much organic matter will kill the fish. It will kill the fish because it will absorb all oxygen available and the fish cannot breathe. And that is why we use ergophyto in sewage plants. We use ergophyto in, uh, in effluent plants, in food producing plants. And the, the mechanism is no different from the soil. The question to ask is, it will decompose organic matter into what? Well, let's go back to nature. When you take something organic inert and you decompose it, it goes down to compost and it carries on all the way down to humus, which is known also as topsoil. Topsoil is what, when you go in a forest and you pick up a piece of ground with your hand and it smells like this fresh soil, you're smelling humus, you're smelling what ergophyto produces. That is why a forest does not require any human intervention to survive. Back to water. So, in a sewage plant, we got 16 to 20 hours to clean water. And the, 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 the cleanup must be done fast and efficient because that water will carry on into river, lakes or irrigation. And therefore, ergophyto will take care of in many, many forms. All the phosphates, nitrates and sulfites will be used for the bacteria to build its own body, for, its body mass up to eight times. The rest will be decomposed into topsoil and CO2, which is beneficial to the environmental system, to the complete ecosystem that lies in water. It makes no difference if it is salt water or sea water. And that is what Ergophyto does in water. We remove what is not supposed to be there. The next subject is hydrocarbons fat, oil, and grease. Why are hydrocarbons so difficult to clean from water or soils? Because hydrocarbons are formed by long carbon chains, and those chains are very difficult to break down. That's why oil can remain for millions of years underground without de further decomposing, or should we say, very slow decomposing. <clears throat> so we need, again, Nature takes care of itself. Take the Bay of Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf of Guinea. For thousands of years, for millions of years, oil has been seeping from the bottom. What cleans it? Again, is what we call it gofito. It's the same group of bacteria. You find that group of bacteria immediately attacks the carbon chains and breaks them down. 
It takes about a month to break down carbon chains in water, seawater or any other water. And that is why it's used in oil fields like in Kuwait, uh, Bergen fields, where the problem from the first Gulf War has been there since 1991 with no solution. El Gofito got the contract to clean up those fields because after 28 years, it turns out to be the only product that actually cleans the soil back to agricultural soil. And the, the, in all cases, the formula is always the same. It's nature. When man solves the problem with a man-made solution, we create other problem. When nature solves the problem, it stops right there. And those are the main functions used with Ergofito. There is a last function, which I like to explain, which came by default, and that is to kill the larva of the mosquito. That was something that happened by chance, by fluke, whereas we were cleaning in South America a lake, while opposite there was a university groups from three different countries researching dengue fever. After we applied Ergofito, they realized that there was no longer live uh, uh, mosquito larva. And that is strange because Ergofito kills nothing. Ergofito is not capable of killing anything. So a four-year test took place between the universities and ourselves where it was found that in effect the larva for 14 days in water, after the female drops a larva in the water, for the next 14 days it feeds on a microalgae. Ergofito simply made that algae, that algae too big for the tiny aperture in the larva to absorb and the larva starved to death. So it was starvation that killed the larva and not, micro, and not ergofito. That meant that the larva would still be eaten by the fish. And the, that's the only product that outside a, a, call it box, it's called uh, mosiology, and is there to kill the larva. It does not affect any other larva of any other insect, just mosquito. It has been used for many years now in many countries to control mosquito population and therefore mosquito-borne sickness. To wrap it up, what we've got here is not magic in the bottle. It is nature in the bottle. Nature is the most powerful tool that ever human could possibly think of. Nature doesn't need us. We need nature. And therefore, Ergofito is untouched, unchanged, unadulted nature in a bottle. Thank you very much.